Hello, Dr. Jaffe. Um, one of our very good medical colleagues writes in that they're seeing a lot of patients who are post-COVID and post-COVID vaccine with symptoms that suggest high histamine levels. Could you explain what the connection between an infection like COVID um, or the vaccine and elevated histamine levels are? Well, and this takes us back to Dr. Carl Pfeiffer in the 1980s in a book titled Mental and Elemental Nutrients, a classic, should be in everyone's library who's a health professional. He defined three types of people. The majority of people are neither histidilic nor histopenic. Histidilic means high histamine. Histopenic means low histamine. Now, he was quite confident that there were three populations of people. About 20% of the population might be classified as high histamine, about 20% as low histamine, and about 60% doesn't matter. So in the high histamine people, post-COVID is a disaster. Because what high histamine means in retrospect, we now know that high histamine means that we're turning the amino acid histidine, which we need for stomach acid, into histamine, which sensitizes the white blood cells and makes them degranulate and makes us show signs of inflammation or repair deficit. More importantly, because post-COVID is mostly chronic scurvy, that is lack of ascorbate antioxidant and lack of magnesium with choline citrate so that you correct the metabolic acidosis. When you correct metabolic acidosis, the histamine goes down. When you have enough antioxidant ascorbate, the histamine goes down. So yes, the very recommendations that we have made in our COVID risk reduction ebook available free online to download should now in the next edition, we should include a, a brief discussion of why people who are disposed, people who are histidilic, have high histamine, are at more risk than the average for long COVID, post COVID, whatever we want to call it, it comes out as chronic scurvy, lack of antioxidants, especially ascorbate, and lack of magnesium choline citrate. So it's a very astute observation clinically. And the type of patient that would gravitate towards the type of doctor that asked this question makes it more likely that he will see high histamine people because high histamine people, this is an association, just an association. High histamine people tend to be very self-aware. They're very aware of their symptoms. They're very aware of how they're feeling and functioning. They want a doctor who communicates very well with them and it treats them like an adult and has a conversation so that they are motivated to follow through on what the doctor recommends. So very interesting question coming from a colleague who I think, like some other colleagues, is smart enough that he attracts high histamine people to his practice. So he would see a higher proportion of these people than the average uh, person. Very interesting question. You would not, at first glance, why should histamine, which sensitizes white blood cells to release their granule contents, which means neurotransmitters and other chemicals, that then rev up the body's immune response mechanism and maybe overuse or use up or prevent there being enough ascorbate and magnesium choline citrate to deal with the situation. And the situation is that histidine is being converted to histamine too much. So also on a separate note, but related to histidine, 
we recommend that people take 600 milligrams of histidine 30 minutes before a meal so that at the time that you need stomach acid, you'll be able to make stomach acid. Now, you have to be careful a little bit with this because if the histamine, sorry, if the histidine, if the amino acid histidine that you take immediately goes to histamine, you will know it. And how will you know it? You will know it because your nose will get stuffy. You know it because you will cough and have some phlegm in your throat. This does not happen very often. Usually histidine taken 30 minutes before a meal provides the stomach acid that is necessary to begin the stomach digestion process. But if after 30 minutes, you notice that you're congested, you notice that you have signs of inflammation, you have signs of repair deficit, you should go slowly with the histidine until the histidelia, the high histamine uh, condition, which is due to histidine being converted to histamine and histamine then setting off this cascade of reactions. So very, very rarely, I would say once or twice in 25 years, uh, a high histamine person who took the histidine noticed 30 minutes later that they were histidilic, that they were having the signs and symptoms of histidine converted to histamine and histamine degranulating the cells. Very rare, but very interesting. And I hope this does uh, draw a connection between long COVID, need for antioxidants and magnesium, and histidine.